Hello, welcome to House of David Ministries. My name is Pastor Eric Michael Teitelman, and I'm going to tell you a little bit tonight about my personal story, my background, how I came to know the Lord, and uh, and the next time I'd like to expand a little bit more and tell you about House of David Ministries and you know what the Lord's been doing, and I think we're I feel like He's taking this ministry. So my parents, both Jewish and uh, both from the Midwest, from Chicago, and I was born in Chicago, and then uh, they moved to California when I was very young. I was probably less than a year old, and then uh, just a few years later, in 1973, both both my parents made Aliyah. They immigrated to Israel, uh, and uh, we were living in Nazareth Elite, uh, which is near Nazareth. And then after that, uh, we had an apartment uh, in Haifa, actually overlooking the Mediterranean. And you can see some some pictures here from our first time in Israel, 1973. My parents uh, had a rough marriage. Uh, things didn't go well so well for them, and they ended up coming back to the U.S. a few years later. They ended up getting a divorce in 1975, 76, and then shortly after 1977, my mother decided to move us back to Israel. My sister and I went back with her, and uh, this time we were living in Bat Yam, which is near Tel Aviv, just south of Tel Aviv, and I was there going to an uh, Orthodox school, an ultra-Orthodox uh, school called Yeshiva Aderet, and um, did that for a few years. I, I really uh, did not have a strong interest in rabbinical Judaism. It was just very confining and legalistic uh, for me. I was uh, maybe going through a phase of my life where I was exploring and wanting to discover my own identity. And I had this longing to, to come back to the United States. I hadn't seen my father in uh, quite a few years, and I felt this strong um, connection and identity as an American citizen. I was now, of course, an Israeli citizen as well. And so I came back in 1984. I um, moved back in with my father, who was living in Northern California. He was still there and uh, went off to finish high school and then went off to college two years later. And that's where my wife and I met, Kim and I met in, in college. And then we got married right after college and two years, uh, a few years four years later actually, we, we had our first uh, child was born and, uh, and then two years later our son was born and it was about that time that, that Kim felt that she needed or wanted us to have some religion in our home. I was. Um, but that, by that time in my life, probably quite secular as an American, I was very comfortable living here at Studied Engineering in uh, California at the um, university there and had a good career. But she, she wanted to raise her kids with some religion, so we started visiting some temples. Kim, of course, is also Jewish, and we had a Jewish wedding, and we started visiting some temples in Los Angeles, and then as we moved out of Los Angeles and other areas we were living, uh, we were visiting local synagogues. And nothing really was fitting. We just uh, couldn't find anything that, that really fit our needs. And so one day, Kim said, well, why don't we visit a church? And uh, I thought, well, if that's what you want, that's fine. I don't know if I buy all this stuff that they talk about, this Jesus person, but why not? Why don't you go visit the church and see what they say? So we, we visited a few churches. Uh, we didn't know anything about denominations. We didn't know anything about Christianity, neither one of us. Uh, knew anything other than a few friends that we had that, that claimed to be Christian, but other than that, we, we didn't know anything about it at all. So we started visiting you know, some churches, and this went on for, for quite a few years, actually. The kids were getting their Sunday school education. We were sitting there often. We'd leave, get a coffee. It was great free babysitting. Don't use that as an excuse, if you know what I mean. But um, this went on for quite a few years, and then I was just convicted, like one I was like, I just need to figure this whole thing out because I'm confused. I hear these teachings about Jesus, these Christians, they worship Jesus. Why do they worship a man? Why do they worship a Jewish man? That's just not, that's just not common. And I thought, well, you know, I've, I've got to figure this thing out. And uh, Kim had picked up a King James Bible, the old English traditional, because that's what the Baptist church said was the official authorized version. And so we... Uh, we, she had a Walmart, a cheap Walmart uh, copy sitting in our living room and I was just frustrated and I just one day opened it up and I sat down and I, and I believed in God and I said, you know what, I just need to know the truth. And I started reading. I started reading Matthew, Matityahu. 
And it was all of a sudden this old English language, which is crystal clear, it was just amazing. I was reading about the Jewish people and this man, Yeshua, Jesus, as it was written about, and I just realized that uh, he's, he's this Jewish man and this, this book was written for a Jewish people about, I believe, our Jewish Messiah. And I thought, how did we miss this? How did we, the Jewish people, miss Yeshua, how do we miss Jesus? And I continued reading. I, I read. I was just just all these answers to questions that I'd had my whole life about eternal life and just questions in general. All these questions were being answered. And I read uh, Mark and Luke and and Jonathan, Jonathan, John, and uh, and then I decided to skip to the end of the story, Revelation, and because uh, I was I was struggling with the, the divinity of Jesus. How could he be a man? How could he be fully God? It just wasn't making sense to me. But I was sensing that he was this very special anointed one, this Messiah, as uh, we, we talk about in, in Judaism. And I go to Revelation, and I'm reading Revelation, and all these, these apocalyptic, end-of-the-age prophecies are all coming to life and making sense to me and reminding me of my, my days uh, studying at the Yeshiva, the Haftorah and the Torah, yeah, about uh, the prophecies for Israel and the prophecies, Daniel and other prophecies that we studied, Isaiah and uh, Jeremiah, Yahu, Yeshiyahu, all these prophecies were coming to life and they were making sense to me. It's like, yes, this makes sense. And then all of a sudden, I see in Revelation the image of this, this man coming in the clouds with power and great glory. And I thought, this is the same vision that God gave to Daniel to Daniel, and I thought, this is the one. And it says that there's a name written on him that no one knows, but only he himself knows that name, and, and he's got a crown on his head, and he is called the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And I thought, that's a title that only God could carry. And I thought, this is it. It's God. This is the one. This is the Messiah. He is He is Jesus. He is, he is God coming for his people. And I was overwhelmed with the, the, the revelation of that moment. And the first thing I said was, wow, the Christians had it right all along. I can't believe it. I can't wait to tell my mother. And I wrote her. And of course, that didn't go over so well. But that started a whole chain of dialogue with, with her that lasted for a year or two years. And the more she argued with me about the, the divinity of Jesus, about uh, who he is and, and what he did for us and on the cross to pay for our sin, the more I dug in to scripture, Old Testament scripture, and the more convicted I became that Jesus absolutely, absolutely is the Messiah of Israel and the King of Kings and Lord of He is the Messiah of the whole, the whole world. And I had this revelation in my heart and I'm sharing it with everybody, my family members, and of course I'm, it's not going over too well with with all my family members, brothers, sisters, and so on. And I, uh, I um, remember we, had, we then had moved to California. We were back in California. We'd moved around a bit before that, and we were back in California. And one day, I was in our living room listening to a worship song. Kim, my wife, had picked up a CD from, from Walmart with some worship songs on it. And all of a sudden, I'm just hit by the power of the Holy Spirit. And I, I knew exactly that it was the Lord. I knew it, but I, it was a, a feeling, a sensation I've never experienced in my entire life. And I just had this question of like, I know this is you, but I just need that confirmation, Lord. And then he would, he would, he would bring that confirmation you know, a second time and a third time. And I thought, this is, this is amazing. And, I, and for the first time in my life, I began to see that not only did I just believe in a God, an invisible God, but God became a tangible reality in my life, that he was a personal God, that he, would, he wants to communicate with us, not just through his written word, but there's a physical tangible manifest presence of God and the power, not just the quiet indwelling presence, the imminence of the Holy Spirit, but a powerful dwelling of the Holy Spirit that, has, that comes upon our lives as believers. And that's, that's the personal story. And next time, I'd like to tell you a 
about House of David Ministries and how God has birthed this ministry and uh, what we've been doing in short, but also what I believe God is calling us to do as a ministry for this nation, for the United States of America, but also very importantly for Israel as God is working on a restoration of, of all of the peoples of the earth. And that's what we're going to talk about. So we'll see you next time. Thank you.